Yo, what's going on boys? Wanted to go ahead and break down this pancake trick that I have been teasing on uh, Twitter, I've teased it on Twitch, I've teased it on YouTube. Pretty much, if you follow me on any social media platform, I have either talked about it or I have been asked questions publicly about it because other people have seen it. Um, so yeah, I've went back and forth in terms of whether or not I wanted to release this. I talked to a couple of guys that I really respect in the Madden community, um, and some of them are fully on board with me releasing it and basically saying, you know, completely change the meta. They're tired of how everybody's playing. And then other people have, like, asked me not to actually release this because we don't really know how or if EA can patch it. And I think that's the bigger issue is that... Normally, you know, we can come up with something in our head, not that EA ever does things logically sometimes, um, but we can't really figure out how they would go ahead and patch this. And it's a, it's got to be a glitch in the game because it does require one specific play and that one play allows you to audible or simply call any other run play that has an RPO in it and it will pancake your team if you are blitzing any less than five people. So if you are rushing a standard three-man, you know, a three-four, right? So you're running just the three linemen. Or let's just, like, if you look at most of these plays, right? So, like, cover two invert in four-six. I wouldn't be able to run. That would get pancaked. Um, cover one contain. Cover three seam. Cover one hole. Cover three. All of those plays, by default, get pancaked. 3-4 bear, you know, cover three, cover one hole, um, cover three hard flat, you know, cover two inverts, got four rushing. You can get the picture, right? So, like, any less than five people rushing, it's going to get pancaked. And it doesn't pancake everybody, but it will pancake enough people to where it makes it damn near impossible to stop the run. And then you add in this quad father element to it, which is hilariously broken in its own right. I don't know I don't know how much fun it'll be to play this. Let me rephrase. I don't think it's going to be fun at all, especially for somebody like me who likes to play that chess match with my opponent. So, let's talk about how this works in a grand scheme, right? In a grand scheme, like if you're on the defensive side of the ball and you're facing this, you're playing mutt, you know that you have to rush at least 5 people on first and second down. But now, on third down, where you would normally like to, you know, send an overload on one side, maybe drop the other side back in coverage, for instance, like a DB fire, right? You're blitzing off one side, you're going to send the other side off in coverage, you'll man people up, things along those lines that will normally tell you, hey, you know, um, I, can, I can mix and match in terms of what routes I think they're going to, you know, be trying to hit, I can take them away. You don't have that ability anymore. You have to rush five people every play or more, five or more people. So that's why there was such a dilemma for me personally. So um, like I said, I, I have no problem breaking the game. Um, for those of you guys that have known me yeah, for the long haul, you guys have seen me break this game in numerous ways, right? I mean, dating back to Madden, what, Madden 08? Madden 10 ish somewhere around there you know is when I first started really finding you know nice glitches in the game and taking advantage of them even last year you know we were the first one that really showed everybody how to use the red route glitch and we showed people how to do the um, you know how to roll out and get out of the pocket against every defense that there was in the game uh, so where you could really abuse that so we've 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 done our fair share of being scumbags when it comes to the rest of the Madden community, right? Um, but this one, this one takes kind of the fun out of it for me. So that is that is where the dilemma came from. So um, with that being said, I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me ramble uh, and talk about it. Let's go ahead and talk about why it works, how to do it, and um, yeah, we'll just keep it going. Uh, so I am obviously in Dallas's playbook. You can do this out of most playbooks in the game have a variation of this. The reason that I chose Dallas when I found this was because I want the ability to have a 0-1 trap. Now, it's not any 0-1 trap. 
it needs to be an RPO trap. So that element to me changes, excuse me, it changed up how people have to try to shoot gaps against me. So just that simple little adjustment right there changes how people can play me. They have to respect the trap and then they have to respect the RPO uh, alert bubble. Those two are the run plays, right? In my scheme that I've broken down, I say my audibles, RPO alert bubble, RPO trap, right? So um, what triggers the glitch? It's actually this play called RPO alert wide receiver screen. Now, if you look and you see, I have zero calls of this because I don't actually run it. I've been, I've been hiding this tip for the longest now. Um, but you come out in this play, and this play is what actually triggers all the shenanigans. So if our opponent was to come out in dollar, right? So say they're in dollar, two men under. They're rushing four people. All right, so we're in dollar, two men under, and you see we've got the three people rushing. We've got our user rushing as well. So in theory, this is not a weak boxable defense because we're rushing four people, which is the letter of the law in terms of how the game's supposed to be programmed. But um, you'll see, we'll even go ahead, we'll pinch our defensive line, we can crash them down. None of this stuff matters. Like, everything I'm doing here does not matter. Right? We can mug the gap. If we're rushing these four people, what you'll see happen is they all get weak boxed. So, obviously, I didn't break that for a, a massive touchdown run or anything like that. Um, but the thing is... Everybody that gets engaged right here, for the most part, ends up on the ground. Tight end, pancake. All these guys. I mean, look at this. Pancake by the guard. Pancake by the tackle. Pancake by... I don't even know. There, there's a log jam, basically. But there's a whole lot of people on the ground. That's <laughs> that's really all, all you need to know. Um, so you may be thinking, what does... Like, what's the counter? Right? And I, I mentioned already, you need to be rushing five people, um, five or more people. So in order to do that, you pretty much eliminate the ability to send single side blitzes, really. I mean, because you, like I said, you have to rush five. So um, you could, in theory, you know, rush um, one side, bluff blitz the other side. Um, and then that would stop the pancake, right? You won't get pancaked if you bluff blitz a corner that is already blitzing, like, for instance, at a DB fire too. So uh, the other options you have would be to call, like, a cover two man, play on one of the safeties, blitz that person as your user. The, you could do that. The same thing goes into play with formations like Big Nickel over G, Right? So if you wanted to go ahead, say you like running match, cover four quarters, whatever. Well, once again, this is four people rushing. So if you're rushing four people, as you'll see, they're going to end up on the ground, right? So you could rush those four and then click on and user one of these linebackers like this and blitz him, right? So this theoretically could work. This, as you'll see, doesn't get pancaked, right? So big nickel over G is one of the better formations to do this out of because generally you're going to rush the four people anyway. Um, the only time that gets into kind of a hairy situation is when you spy one of the guys. I know a lot of people like running this and they spy somebody. And um, yeah, you'll see that triggers the pancakes. Now, I'm not even using my other controller, so the computer was just jogging right there. But um, just to kind of show you, you do this same concept, but you spy one of your defensive linemen. Yeah, there's just this pancake city, right? So you see, not everybody gets pancaked, but for instance, like Lawrence Taylor gets pancaked, gets ran over. You get uh, whoever whoever that guy is over there, he gets pancaked. 73 puts Palomalu on his butt. Um, yeah, it's just, I'm telling you, it's it's a problem to, to deal with. Um, when I found this, I, I pretty much ran this in every chance I could to, uh, you know, really abuse it in last chance qualifier. Unfortunately, I, I played against some really quality people that 
just sent five, six people at me every play. Just said, you know, beat me. Um, at the time, I didn't didn't know exactly what uh, stopped the stopped it from working. I've since figured that out, but um, that's what it is. You have to blitz a ton of people in order to really trigger um, the weak box. So being in a four defensive lineman set is not going to save you, especially if you start you know trying to make other adjustments like spying a DT or um, not blitzing your user, things like that, right? So hopefully you guys understood this. Um, let me know your thoughts. Do you, Is this something that I should have released? Should I have kept this a secret and not told anybody? Um, you guys let me know what you think. Um, like I said, it's not game-breaking in the sense that like you can't play against it. There is a counter to it. But when people don't know it's coming, it's a really big problem. And before we you know, hop off, put, I want to put this into your mind right, right, right quick because this is where it really becomes an issue. There's an ability in this game called Threat Detector, which means I can tell if you're blitzing your DBs or not. So if you're in DB Sting or DB Fire or any of these cornerback blitzes where you may be rushing your player, you may not be rushing your player, 3-3-5 wide, right? You know, you may be in all-out zone coverage. Or you may be rushing the outside linebacker but not your user. I can see that on third and fourth down, which means I now know whether or not you will get weak boxed. There's so many elements to this that... Um, if you really wrap your head around it and all the things that you can do with it, it truly changes the way this game can be played. So hopefully you guys understand it. If you have any questions, obviously feel free to hit me up. Definitely check the Discord. The Madden Daily Discord will be there the entire time. So uh, yeah, we, we answered things pretty quickly in there. So if you have any questions, make sure you hop in and let us know what you're thinking.